I said I'm always the black guy, the burden of a blessing. Mirrors really be dishes when you working on reflections. Adopted to a zip code where ain't a question. Just me and Charlie Brown here serving and collecting. Right, bro? Greetings, welcome back to the Bachelor Man's Kitchen. So my dad goes fishing in the Gulf from time to time and sometimes he'll bring back these fish heads like big old fish heads, snapper, groupers. Today I'm gonna to be steaming a snapper. Had a big old snapper head that I got uh, from my dad on his last fishing trip. On another video, I'm gonna be doing a grouper head. Uh, again, a big old grouper head uh, that he got back uh, when he went fishing. Because sometimes uh, when they go fishing, like these white guys, they be catching these fishes. They do the little fillets and then they throw away just whole, just a whole lot of a, a whole lot of fish. You know what I mean? So my dad and his friends, being the older Jamaican gentleman that he is, will get like the, the grouper heads and the snapper heads for free. Now the grouper head is actually my favorite fish head to steam because the grouper head is so meaty. I'm telling you fam, get, go to the farmer's market if you can't go fishing yourself, get you a big old grouper head and steam that bad boy up good with some veggies. Man, that thing is so tasty. There's so much meat on that grouper head, but today I'm gonna to be doing a snapper head. So I'm gonna walk you through my whole prep, uh, my whole process of prep, getting ready. You know, how I wash it to really get rid of that sort of fishy smell and taste after you cook, uh, you know, and how I do my veggies and just how I go about steaming it. I right, come along, y'all. So right now I'm gonna walk you through my ingredients. So I've got vinegar to wash, and believe it or not, this is my container with flour you're looking at here. So I learned this little trick from my mom uh, a little while back. So when prepping meat, like chicken, she originally told me chicken, I, I should sprinkle a little bit of uh, flour on the chicken before I wash and that helps get rid of like the raw meaty taste. I don't know the science of it all exactly, but it has something to do with the yeast. The yeast help neutralizes, you know, that sort of raw meaty smell and taste on meats. So since then, I've actually started using it on all different types of meat and I've tried it on my fish when I'm prepping my fish. I do like a wash with flour, wash it thoroughly, and it really helps getting rid of that uh, that raw fishy taste. But here you'll see I have a couple different colors of uh, sweet peppers. I, I just like different colors of sweet peppers because it just it just gives a cornucopia of colors for my dish. You know, I have some lemon to wash my fish. I, I don't have any lime at the moment, so I'm just using what's in my fridge. I have some ginger. I have a couple uh, a couple uh, roots of scallions. I have a couple different onions. I have some uh, some uh, white onions, some red onions. My girlfriend usually uses the red onions for salad. And here is one of my favorite ingredients, the Grace Cock Soup flavored soup mix. Ah, man, this really takes your steam fish to another dimension. There's also a fish tea flavor of this uh, Grace product. Uh, same packet, it just says fish tea. You can use that if you want. I, I prefer to go with the cock soup because it's got like just a little bit of spice to it. Then over here, I've got some uh, minced garlic. I don't have any fresh garlic cloves, so I'll just use some uh, refrigerated minced garlic. I have my adobo all-purpose seasonings. I've been messing with uh, some of your Creole seasonings, so I have some uh, uh, all-purpose uh, Creole seasoning, some Cajun seasoning, some basic salt, rock salt, some pepper, and I have this thing called allspice. Uh, Jamaican folks call this pimento. I know it is pimento. You know what I mean? So I usually uh, drop a few, a few grains of that in the pot, you know, to give it that pimento taste. But yeah, man, got my ingredients ready. So I'm going to start by washing my fish and uh you know 
get the whole seasoning process started. I then proceed to wash the fish with the flour I mentioned before, wash with vinegar, wash my veggies with vinegar, and then I chop up all my veggies. Uh, as you can see, I'm cutting them like real small, more of a dicing action. Cutting up my different color red peppers. You know, I like my my steamed fish veggies to have a uh, bunch of different colors. Uh, cut up my onions. I'm using red onions and white onions because that's what I had at the time. I use some ginger. I always like to put a little bit of ginger in my uh, steam fish. Some thyme and my allspice. Then I'd proceed to wash the fish thoroughly with the flour, with some uh, lime. In this case, I only had lemon, so that's what I used. wash with vinegar thoroughly and then I would stuff a lot of that fresh seasoning that I've already prepped into into the cavity of the the fish head start with my my dry seasonings I'd stuff some of that minced garlic inside the, the mouth of the fish. As you can see, I'm seasoning this fish real thoroughly. I'd add my Maggie cock soup mixture. I'd put some on the inside of the fish, then put the stuff the fish with the fresh seasonings, like I said before. First things first, I'm gonna put on some water to boil in my electric kettle. Then I'm gonna put on my pot here. <laughs> some people might call it the Dutch pot. And I'm gonna put like uh, two tablespoons of butter. I'm just melting this butter in the pot. I like to create like a bed on the bottom of the pot with my veggies that I've seasoned up already. And the reason I do this is so that the fish doesn't have direct contact with the bottom of the pot, right? So uh, I've got, of course, my peppers and my carrots and everything that I cut up earlier. So what I'm, I'm gonna do once my butter is completely melted is I am going to create that bed of veggies on the bottom of the pot. Of course, always wash your hands. So, I, I made a steam fish head like a couple weeks ago and then I spoke to my mom after I sent her some photos and she was telling me that I should use like a little browning or some ketchup to give it a little bit of color. So, I'm gonna do that on this, uh, this time around. So, first things first, I'm gonna reduce my heat to like medium now that my butter is all the way melted right and I'm gonna put in my my uh, my carrots 
on the bottom. Again, it's just creating a bed of veggies so that the fish isn't directly, isn't directly uh, touching the, the bottom of the pot, right? So that's all I'm doing here. So that's all I'm doing here. And then, so let me go ahead and set that up. All right, all my carrots are there. All my carrots are there. You know, it's kind of sauteed. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this heat a little bit more to like four. All right, and then, remember I stuffed all my veggies inside, inside this fish, this ginormous fish head. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. Ooh. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and put all, let me wash my hands off real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and put like all this, uh, all this seasoning over, right? You can hear the thing uh, sizzling. So, uh, pro tip, always have a kettle or another pot of boiling water handy, right? So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and pour some, uh, boiling water on the rest of the seasoning on the rest of the seasoning and veggies and then I'm gonna just pour it over this fish in the past I have been guilty a little bit of putting too much water in you know so I'm gonna just uh, start with a little bit here and then see how I feel from there there on out if I want to add a little more water always boiling water Never add cold water, all right? The boiling water makes everything good. Even when cooking like curry goat, stuff like that, oxtail, if you need to add some more water, use boiling water. Do not add cold water to your pot. All right? All right, so now I've added that. Now I've added that. I'm gonna scrape the rest of this seasoning into the pot, all right, all right, that's it, I think I got it all, let's put this pot away, gotta wash that, gotta wash that later, so what I'm gonna do now is, you can see the water level in this is really low, so I'm gonna add just a little more water on the top so that it washes the rest of this uh, cock soup mixed down into the pot a bit. All right, so it's just boiling water, boiling water, boiling water, boiling water. And then I had a, a, a little bit of uh, sauce here. I'm gonna add this over the top. You don't have to. Uh, I had some sauce left over. It's like, uh, it's like a jerk sauce, so I'm just gonna use it. I'm gonna spread it over the top. Right, and then it's gonna it's gonna steam and matriculate down. So again, this this uh, batch of this my steam fish head, I'm I'm doing a little bit of an experiment, right? And as a cook, you should be ready to experiment. So I'm gonna follow my mom's my mom's uh, advice a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is just because I want to add a little color to it. That's all. I just want to add a little color to it, you know, so it's not just like yellow. So here I have a jerk sauce, a jerk barbecue sauce, and I, I even use this in like my oxtail. It, it gives whatever you're, you're preparing a really good, really good, uh, really good uh, taste and texture. So I'm going to add just a little bit over the top, and then later on you'll see what I'm doing, right? So once my once my uh, my fish is be, is being steamed and bubbling over, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the, 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 the water with all that mixture around it and the butter and pour it over, and then that will uh, that will sort of disperse this mixture. Uh, here's another thing: oxtail seasoning. It's got like a, a, a very brown color, so I'm just adding it so my gravy will have a brown color. It's not really for taste, but like uh, like, <laughs> like I said, I'm just following my mom's advice because she was like, oh, your gravy don't have any 
color and she told me add a little brown into it which I didn't add brown in but I'm, I'm adding these these because they have like a darker color to it so hopefully I'm gonna make her proud this time so again this is probably gonna be like different a little bit different from other traditional people you see doing you know steam fish online but I have a feeling this is gonna be great and this is going to be delicious. Matter of fact, I'm confident it's gonna be great and delicious. So I'm gonna let that bubble for a bit and start steaming. I've got it at exactly at medium heat right now. All right, and then I'm gonna set my timer for, I'm gonna set 30 minutes. 30 minutes should be uh, good to cook this all the way through. However, this is a pretty large fish head. So I'm gonna set it at 30, and then at 30, I'm gonna test it by sticking a fork through it and uh, see where I'm at. So my mixture is bubbling. I have my uh, heat set exactly to medium. So let me get inside here and see. Ooh, it's coming nicely. So now I'm gonna start taking that gravy around around the, the fish and now I'm gonna be pouring it over it just like my mom suggested just like I knew it would work all right so yeah so I like the color of the gravy you know I, I think I like this then if it was just like plain sort of yellow like you know with just that uh, Maggie soup so my veggies are being cooked right on top so yeah let me pour this over it pour it over it so now you see what i mean by just pouring that gravy around and that sort of dissipate the 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 the, the, the sauces i had poured on top i think this is going to be like very delicious very very delicious yeah very delicious and i feel good i, I don't think i put uh, too much water in this batch so that's good in the past there have been batches where I definitely you put too much water in so I'm gonna just pour that over mix it around and let it keep going so I'm at 15 minutes now so I'm gonna uh, let it do its thing now I'm gonna reduce the heat from medium to to like three and a half and let it bubble let it steam let it do its thing yeah man this is gonna be delicious for sure all right all right just checking back in checking back in so I'm at the 30 minute mark now I'm gonna give it a test I think I might actually need to let it simmer some more. I'm gonna let it simmer some more. Let's see. Let's see. Tell you what. Let's do a let's do a little taste test on my gravy here. This is how I test my gravy. I don't put my mouth on the spoon <laughs> that I'm using. So good. Wow. That gravy is so good. Oh, man, I gotta thank my mom for following her advice. I mean, other gravies that I've done in the past have been pretty, pretty good as well. But I do like this one that I add the sauces on. I really do like this one. So, I feel, I feel good where that's at. So, I'm just going to give it a test to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. And usually, like, you think of a fish head, you don't think of, like, sticking a fork through. But I like to stick a fork through to make sure that it's cooked all the way. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce the heat even more, and then I'm gonna set a timer for like five more minutes. So I had it at like three and a half. I'm gonna uh, set my heat to three and uh, set my timer for like five more minutes. And then I should be ready to dine, ready to eat. And do a little bit of this action once more. Just pour a little more over it. Pour a little more over it. Yeah, man, this is gonna be so good. You know, bachelor style cooking, fam. You know, as a yard man cooking some food. Got to be ready to experiment. Five more minutes. Well, my steamed fish head is ready. Experimental. Ready to go. Yummy.